Hello, hello, hello. It's Friday, it's Friday. It's the end of the week, it's Friday. Welcome to another IG Live WABA conversation in connection with She Knows Her Sports. I am your host, Helen Bohanna. And um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the WABA, it is a professional women's league worldwide. Um, It has 24 teams in 17 states, including Tijuana, Mexico. Um, It's actually an extended platform for female basketball players who are looking for uh, more opportunities to either go pro within the WNBA or um, go to play overseas. And for more information on the league, on how you can actually become a sponsor, a coach, Uh, join a team, or um, actually become a partner, please visit womensaba.com or actually follow them here on Instagram at womensaba. So today's guest, um, of course, is going to be another boss lady, like the shirt I have on. Um, Her name is Patrice Wallace-Moore. She is the um, co-owner of the Mount Vernon Shamrocks. And um, we're waiting on her to join us here in just a moment. But other than that, hope everybody's doing okay. Yes, happy Friday. Okay, let's see. Just give me another um, second. Here we go. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> can you hear me good? Yep, I can hear you. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Oh, and happy anniversary, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Try to my husband's trying to set me yeah. up like he's got me on this whole little studio. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Can you hear me though? Can you hear me good? Yeah, now I can. You may need to hit another spot. Move until I get a spot. Hold on, y'all. We getting it together. That's only because okay. I'm in a situation right now that I have no power. So I don't have any power. Uh oh. I don't have any Wi Fi. You know. How about now? Can you hear okay, me? Okay, right? there we go. Yep, now I got you. Now so I'm going to stay you. right here. I'm not going to move. I'm gonna stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that you're on, can you can you tell us a little about yourself? We'd like to know who Miss Patrice Wallace Moore is. Who is she? Uh, Patrice Wallace Moore is just a a, a a woman from humble beginnings. Um, uh, I born in Yonkers, New York. Grew up in Mount Vernon, New York. Um, re- you know, went to school in, uh, you know, with uh, Marsha Blunt uh, High okay. School and um, played on the basketball team with Marsha. We won the state championship together uh, as seniors and, and, and went undefeated. We we're always very proud of that. You know, jerseys retired. I remember, you know, when we had our jerseys retired one day, Marsha looked, we were looking at each other 
She said, Trees, did you ever think that we would get our jerseys retired when we were playing? I said, no, we were just trying to do the right thing. You know, we were just trying to win because we were from Mount Vernon and we wanted to rep our city. It's coming. <laughs> are you all right can you hear me yeah okay i was saying that your your yeah, waba okay. president and ceo marsha blunt was a baller i enjoyed playing ball with her in high school for sure oh yeah that marsha honey she she marsha hey she broke barriers she she yeah. she's a hall of famer in, in yeah yeah history. definitely of course okay yeah, okay. listen, I only got points because I stole the ball a lot and I scored layups. But other than that, when Marsha had the ball, it was on and popping. <laughs> hey, you know what? The, what you did was, it, it count. You stole the ball, hey. you got your team the ball, and, and hey, every point counts. So I always, tell people never, I always tell people never get mad at somebody who's the, who's the main scorer on your team. Do something else exactly. to make yourself important. You know, so me, I stole the ball. I stole everything. I took every charge. I passed every pass I could pass, and I was fine with that because we because it caused us to win. And look at y'all, y'all champions, and you retired your jerseys. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, so, no, no doubt about it. So, with your athletic background, um, when did it come about that you wanted to uh, take an interest in owning a basketball team? <clears throat> well, well, I think we had tried to talk about this last week. Um, but, you know, it was never really something I, I, I was interested in. You know, I just watched Marsha from afar. Sometimes you just live vicariously through somebody else. And I find Marsha to be a pioneer. Oh, yeah. um, when she asked me to do it, because I saw Oh, yeah. Um, until I went to a meeting. Um, with um, after Shamoya McKenzie, she was a 13-year-old uh, up-and-coming basketball player who was shot and killed on New Year on, on New Year's Eve, and I was attending an, uh, a meeting as part of the Shamoya McKenzie Foundation, and um, I heard somebody say, "I'm gonna miss my shamrock," and at that very moment, it was like light bulbs went off. I called Marsha the next day. I said, "I'm in." I said, "As long as we can name it the Mount Vernon oh, Shamrocks in honor of Shamoya McKenzie." And that's how our name came about. Um, we actually, even though we were the Shamrocks, the colors of our team are the colors of the Jamaican flag. And of course, Jamaican yeah. uh, celebration was, yes, was, I believe, yesterday. Yesterday, particularly in Brooklyn. Yeah. And, um, and so we, our, our uniform colors have the Shamrock on it, but they're all the Jamaican flag colors because uh, Shamoy was Jamaican. And so that's, why, that's how our team came about. That's what's uh, represent for Jamaica. Um, so can you tell us a little about the, the Mount Vernon Shamrocks? Uh, Mount Vernon Shamrocks, um, play, they play out of the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon. Um, at the time, that's when my husband's the, um, he, he was the executive uh, director of development at the time. He's now retired. Um, but um, that's where we decided to play out of, again, because we represent um, Mount Vernon and because we represent Shamoya. And because the Boys and Girls Club has a rich history of basketball, um, male and female basketball that, you know, that has been birthed from the Boys and Girls Club. And so when we think about Gus and Ray mm -hmm. Williams, Rodney and Scooter McRae, Lowe's and Curtis Moore, you know, we think about, you know, Ricky Burton and some of the other players. And then the, from the women's standpoint, of course, myself, Marsha um, and um, Maria Roberts, uh, Ennis, and just so many of us played out of the Mount Vernon Boys and Girls Club. So you know, we wanted to make sure that we brought something there. Because it's like always repping the boys. So it's time that we yeah. went to get the girls, you know. Get the oh, girls yeah, the girls right. can handle their rock too, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So so how are so how are things now for your organization now that um, it has been mutually 
uh, agreed upon that, you know, the 2020 season is canceled? Uh, it's been kind of tough. I, I haven't really been able to be as, as much in close contact with my girls other than, um, you know, we connect through Instagram, through um, um, GroupMe, things like that. So I haven't been as much in contact with them as I would like to. But, you know, the community knows that we're still, um, we're still around and available, um, you know, because the Boys and Girls Club, which is our home base, has also been uh, closed due to the uh, COVID. It's a community organization yeah. that has great restrictions because of its involvement with youth. So I've been in touch with their CPO, uh, Mel Campos. He's very much aware of the fact that we want to resume this when the COVID, you know, settles down. But right now, his main okay. focus is making sure that the kids that he is serving are safe. And that is our primary concern as well, as, as well as our, our girls, um, our, our team. But many of them, you know, uh, some of the players in the league are like maybe kids that just came out of college. Most of the ladies that play for me are career women. Right, that actually have other jobs okay. that they have to focus on. Some of them are college coaches, some of them are teachers, some of them are in business and finance, and so they're doing things other than just you know basketball. And so as a result, they're they're trying to make sure that their lives are still providing income for them during this 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 period of time. Oh well, yeah, it's, that's definitely uh, very important. And speaking, but of I can say that Nadia Duncan, who was one of my top players and has been playing with me. She received her master's during this time, so we did a virtual oh. graduation for her. So I'm very proud of her. And so I love seeing, I'm an education buff. So whenever I see somebody get a, a you know, um, a master's, a doctorate, bachelor's, whatever, you know, to me, I always tell people, I love that you play ball, but I always wanted people to become successful women, you know, um, whether they won a championship or not. You know, my goal when I became a coach in, in high school was not to win championships, it was to help women become successful. And to see exactly. a successful woman, I wanted them to desire to be a successful woman as well. Oh yeah, that is very much needed because you know, you you always have to have a backup plan regardless. You know, I understand, you know, um, people's dreams may be a professional athlete, but sometimes you may still need to have that backup plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's and, and, it's a uh, it's tough. I've, I have one of my young ladies is in med school. I, I, did a, I wrote a letter of recommendation. And a couple of nurses from high school, this is, you know, that I coached. Okay. So when I see that, you know, I know that the intent of what I, you know, what I to, wanted to sow into them was there. You know, when I think about, you know, um, you know, like even, even Taylor Palmer. Taylor Palmer went to West Virginia University, but she's now married to um, Jordan Lucas, who just won an uh, NFL championship. Um, you know, with the uh, Casey Chiefs last year. But, okay. you know, she's, you know, a, a brilliant young woman, a brilliant young mind, and, uh, of course, Nadia. And so the kids that I coached in high school are the one main reason why I, I figured out a way to try to get back into, you know, doing this to give them another opportunity as well. Honey, you better sow that seed. Sorry, if you don't sow. It shows. It shows. It shows. <laughs> You know, you, you're going to go down in history, too. Um, so speaking of, you know, um, with what you do and how you make sure that, that others are going uh, beyond their uh, being an athlete with getting education, um, what are, are ways that um, you as the CEO and the, the Shamrock organization, are y'all um, reaching out to your surrounding community? with anything like you have any special projects you want to come up and, well, and, you know, and possibly because, do the benefit? Because we're connected also with the Shamoya McKenzie Foundation, um, which is, mm -hmm. you know, um, a, 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 you know, we provide, Shemoya McKinsey Foundation provides scholarships to young people. And so we mm -hmm. worked pretty much closely hand in hand with them uh, when they had their, uh, when they have the annual gala, we're there. And so we try to allow a lot of our resources also to support whatever they're doing um, uh, with Nadine oh. McKinsey. Uh, she's part of the Garden of Dreams Foundation with the New York Knicks. And so last year, you know, our entire, I would think, I think about eight or nine of our girls from our team came out to support that. 
cause. And this year, uh, we're giving out scholarships. Matter of fact, we just gave a scholarship to Shemoy McKenzie Foundation, that is, just gave a scholarship to a young man by the name of Anthony T.J. Johnson from New Rochelle High School, who is an outstanding young man. Um, but, you know, so what we have, whatever we can do to try to bring resources to the communities, especially against gun violence and things like that, you know, we really want to do that. So, you know, I'm, I was hoping that because um, of the way that the WNBA and the NBA are focusing on the Black Lives Matter movement and, um, you know, in the Say Her Name movement, that we as a WABA would be able to do that. My, my thought is that we might have to, we, I think we should still do it, but we just might have to push it off to next year. Because the problem is, a, a lot of times in these situations, we are, we are, we are, we're fire for the moment, right? Exactly. When the moment is yeah. hot, you know, we're hot. But when the moment is no longer hot, we're cold. Exactly. So if we can figure out a way to keep the moment hot, even when the time is cold, I think next year we should still roll into um, something where we're focusing on um, a cause that brings the WABA, um, uh, you know, a, a platform that's not just basketball, but also focuses on um, other types of issues. Okay. And, and speaking of uh, the Shamoya McKenzie Foundation, um, for those who are watching and those who will watch, how can anyone be able to support or donate to that foundation to, to keep things rolling? Um, well, there is a website, uh, the Shamoya McKenzie Foundation. I actually put, today is my birthday, so I actually put on my That's Facebook birthday. page, you know, how they have those uh, fundraisers. Um, so I put my fundraiser up for the Shamoya McKenzie Foundation, which I do every year. Okay. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, because we also are not able to do a lot of fundraising, we're going to miss our annual gala this year. We still want to be able to give scholarships next year to kids. And so we want to be able to, you know, raise enough money to bring scholarships to the young people this year. Um, there were, I believe, four young people um, that received monetary scholarships. In spite of everything that's going on, we still figured out how to give monetary awards to uh, young people. Wow. So we want to make sure that each year we increase that. We won't be able to have a gala this year, but we will have a gala next year. And um, we want to be able to, um, to continue to support uh, that foundation because that foundation is also about the gun, you know, works with Moms Demand Action as far as gun violence, because what we don't want to do is continue to lose our kids. You know, we, 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 we have a Black Lives Matter cause, and I understand it, you know, from the standpoint of cops and this, that, and the other. But we also exactly. have to make sure that Black Lives Matter to us, right? So we're not also making sure that we're helping our young people who might be involved in gang violence to not be involved in gang violence, give them mm -hmm. other things to do. It, it could minimize some of the, um, the violence that we're seeing in, in our community. So we be, need to step out um, of our comfort zone sometimes and get into the trenches to help people in the, in the, in the inner city communities to, to have something more to do for our young people so that they won't turn to gun violence or any type of violence for that matter. And I totally agree. And, and just know that you all have my support on that. Just just know that like on, on behalf of my brand and personally myself, because I, I truly believe that we all that's part of all of our purpose here on Earth is to, you know, uh, especially support one another and, and turn around and pave the way for our next generation to come. So. Absolutely. You would think, you know, it's amazing because as much as we think that um, everything is new, you know, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, right? So there's always right. been a time that this, this has, there's been a time prior to this that this, there's a similarity. Um, there's a book written by an author, Jeffrey Canada, called Fist, Stick, Knife, Gun. And in that particular <laughs> book that was written many, many years ago, he talks about the transition of, of the way fighting occurred, you know, first in the streets, and there was a respect when you fought with your fists. And then knives came, a fist, stick, knife, gun. The sticks came and then knives came. And now we're at not just guns, we're at automatic weapons, right? Exactly. And so we're in a time period that, you know, you can't even, people don't even learn how to deal with their emotions. Um, they don't know how to process feelings in a way that they can communicate and talk. They just decide, well, yeah. you get mad at me, I get mad at you. Why don't you shoot each other? But there's no communication with that. And then once that happens, revenge happens. So now you shot my brother, I'm going to shoot your brother. 
you know, and, exactly. I, and so on and so forth, you know. But you know that was in the Bible too. I just wanted to let you know that that was in the Bible oh, yeah. too. You you better come you know? with that so, word. Honey. So it ain't this ain't new stuff. I was I was doing a teaching in out of uh, Second Samuel the other day, and it was saying that you know the, the, the there was continuous fighting. One one killed the brother. He said, "Well, I'm gonna come back and kill you, and then I'm gonna kill you." And finally, one said, "Listen, how long are we gonna keep fighting until the sun goes down? Like we're never gonna stop fighting if somebody doesn't step up and say something." We're never going to stop killing each other unless somebody stands up and say enough is enough. We're going to stop killing each other. And imagine what happens if we stop killing each other and we come together and unite really against this cause. Exactly. Because this, yes, because this land needs all the peace it has. You better preach. There's nothing wrong. Hey, there's never a, a right or wrong time to preach, honey. Thank you. You better preach, okay? And I'm so glad you preach it on my IG live. How about that? I'm so glad. Um, <laughs> and so, so speaking with uh, everything that's going on, how are how are you? Hey, you can preach all you want, honey. You can preach all you want. We we want to hear it. Look, uh, Marcia said, "Come on now." She said, come on now, Elder Moore. <laughs> so, uh-oh, here we go. We're going to get her back. We're going to get her back, y'all. Come on. Can you hear me? Let me get you back. Let me let me get you back. Hold on. Yes, y'all. We just heard a word. You hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, there you go. Okay. I said it's hard because I Yeah, you bet. Can you hear me? Okay, well we just we just have a few more questions, but I'm I'm glad that, that you gave us a word, honey. We just have a few Let more me... questions and then we can we can end it. But I'm glad you gave us that word though. We needed that. Can Ooh, you hear me? I'm still feeling that. <laughs> So, can you so hear right now on? within this, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay, good. Are you good? Okay, good. Can you? Okay, all right. So, so right now, um, Miss Patrice, how how are you doing? How do you, how are you holding yourself up mentally, like to stay positive? I felt chill to me. We gonna get her back. Hold on. She just gotta move a little bit. The power out where she at. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. She going she coming back. Oh wow. Hmm. I don't know about y'all, but I'm still feeling those chills from that word. Now this is one of the interviews that that's gonna stand out.
At least she. All right, you guys. Um, Miss Patrice Wallace Moore just uh, she just got off, but um, hopefully she gonna come back on and find her a spot. <laughs> right. But woo, this was a good one. I'm still feeling chills from her word. Yes. But Marsha, you did inform me of that. That's a powerful lady. Yes. She spoke from the power of the tongue, as the Bible would say. But in the meantime, we did, um, it was good that we got to know enough of her so far. But if it, um, if it takes, then, hey, we'll bring her back on. But, um, you know, it was very important. We, we got to know what organization she works closely with. Okay. Okay, good. We can hold out for her. It's okay. <laughs> we support one another. But yes, um, this was amazing. It was. I, I agree with it. I agree with it. You know, especially with it being the end of the week. Still, everybody is you know, trying their best to, you know, make they day, their day count. And she come with a word. I know I done said that about 20 times, but I love it. I love when I feel a powerful word. Yes, we did. And I'm glad it, it was for an, a WABA conversation here on She Knows Her Sports. Hi. Marilyn Jules has joined us. Yes, Shannon. Miss Patrice has spoken a powerful word, honey. You can catch it on the recap once we get it posted. But we just gonna Give it a few more moments, see if she um if she can tap back in. We all know with these power outages and oh yeah. Oh yeah, two powerful bosses. Not one but two. How about that? Oh, yeah. And we're going to have plenty more uh, powerful bosses. I'm looking forward to it. But again, referring back to these power outages and Wi-Fi, you know, it, it, it causes these technical difficulties, but it's okay. It is okay. We'll get through it. Oh yeah. Again, like I like I mentioned earlier, we can always have her back. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um I'm getting an update from the CEO of the Women's ADA. But, um, you know, it, it was, here she go, I see her. So let's see, let's see. <laughs> there we go. Gotta make it happen. 
Listen, I got to drive a couple of miles just to connect. You know how important you are, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. See, that made my day. See, listen at that. And you know what? We can actually pick up where we left back off, honey. So um, the question was, how are you? How are you mentally? How, how do you get up every day and, and maintain your positivity, being that you know, we're in a worldwide pandemic. Um, the the season for your, your team has been canceled this year. Um, you know, the unjust is going on in the world. So so how do you how do you maintain yourself every day? So I, every morning, and personally. Every morning, believe it or not, I get up every morning at about five 30, uh, between 5.30 and 5.45, and I actually I'm, I'm part of a prayer group. And so every morning before I start the day, I'm actually in prayer. Um, I'm praying for the world, praying for anything um, that is happening in my family or the family of friends or others. And, and my husband always says that when you pray, you change the frequency that you're facing the day with. And so I, I, I start off with prayer. And it doesn't matter, you know, what it is that I'm facing with every day. And that has a tendency to bring me through. Um, as the CEO of my company where, where I work, um, we had many, many, many people test positive for COVID. Oh. And it was a very hard experience for me um, as the leader because every day I worried, is somebody going to die? Is somebody going to, you know, at, at, while I'm at the helm, you know, did I make a decision or not make a decision soon enough that impacted the lives of many people? And so there were nights that I went home in tears, you know, and I called out everybody's name who I knew was, you know, had COVID, I would just constantly pray for them on a regular basis. And it got me through, but there were some days that it was very heavy and it felt very depressing um, because, it, you know, there were times I had to quarantine myself because people would be in my office and then or walk me to the car for, to get something out of my car. And next thing I know, they would be out that night and the next day they were COVID positive. And I'm like, I, they were in my office and like, how did I escape that? How did I get past that without becoming positive? I don't know. Um, but I was, I was able to lead them. So I was able to lead them through it with 20 weeks beyond it. Now, every, um, every, every day I would have a meeting now I'm at once a week. So this morning I met with, even on my vacation, I met with my team and I always start out by saying, thank you. Thank you for the work that they do. I, we work with people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol. And um, oh. and to be honest with you, in New York State, there have been more people dying from drug overdoses than there have been from COVID right now. And so, you know, I know that the work we do is valuable work. Uh, and, um, and, I, and I pray for anybody who's suffering from the disease of mental illness and addiction right now. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, um, from a... Uh, a CEO's point of view um, and from a woman of God yourself um, and with sports being, I mean, you know, having the, one of the biggest impacts in the world. Um, have you thought of a way um, that the Shamrocks can personally like take a stand, you know, like with the WNBA, they're doing like the say her name, um, you know, just to, just to, you know, just, to continue to throw that positivity out there or to bring awareness to something. I, I, I would like, I would like for not just the share marks, but for all of us to really um, work with within our Patrice, your your phone again.
Hold on, you guys. We're going to get her back. Yep. Hold on. Let's see. You know what? That's how you know this this interview is very important. She taking the precautions. Here we go. To come in and, and, and go back out, come in again. Can you Are hear you me? Here? I can very well. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. 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 So the young lady basically said that we should not be worrying, worrying about whether a person's just educated or vote, that even if a person doesn't have any of those things, they should be respected just because they're breathing. And that meant so much to me. And I learned that, you know, sometimes we can look down our nose at people because we might be educated or we might uh, because we're voters. But, you know, we should be respecting people's lives just because they're breathing. And so that meant, you know, so much to me. Exactly. That young, I, heard, I learned so much from that young lady. And I said, OK, we, we, I don't have a problem doing that. But now that you have your breath, what are you going to do with it? Yes. Oh, see, that is exactly with with what you are telling us today. What you are are filling our minds with today, we can tell that you are actually serving your God's given purpose. So, so you know, with with you being blessed enough to do what you're doing, um, how can how can we support you? in your team how can we uh support the the shamrocks and and how can we support you know patrice wallace i mean patrice wallace more how can we support you you, you know what I, I just think being a part of the waba is a big deal um you know mm. con yeah, i think continuing to keep the the voices alive and speaking out you know when we when we see things that are right we speak out when they're right when we see things that are wrong we need to say that they're wrong and we need to be okay with it i've been telling people lately that i am unapologetically me and i used to change who i was because i wanted to be around somebody that would accept me to be like them but i don't have to be like anybody else i have to be what god designed me to be and i have to be okay with that you know, and so basically being okay with who you are is supporting me, you know, being okay to speak up and, and be proud of who, who you are in your skin, uh, in your place as a woman, you know, I'm very proud of, the, of what I've accomplished. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a proud of how it's been accomplished. And I, and I understand that what I've accomplished, I've accomplished because of what God has in me. But I also have an amazing husband. I have to say, let me tell you something. Now, I don't, I don't play no games. People know. the shamrocks really is you know as a team when we come together let's let's when, let's let's play ball let's have fun let's be respectful and i'm hoping that you know the shamrocks will regain you know our place um you know in the waba when this COVID is over is over <laughs> that's what the plan is <laughs> okay so with with that how can uh do you have any uh opportunities for partnerships do you have opportunities for job openings Spons do you have so um, sponsorship how can someone sponsor, sponsor your team yeah, sponsorship is probably the best way it's um we we do have um um a um an email uh mb mb shamrocks 30 uh mb shamrocks with an x 
um, 30 uh, at Gmail. And, um, and so we, we, we did have some sponsors from last year. Uh, we've had a couple of sponsors that have stepped in. Um, as far as, um, you know, uh, announcing and, um, and um, you know, my, right now our family, my family has been phenomenal at stepping in and doing a lot of the work to make it, to make things possible. My mother-in-law is like 80, 80 years old and she does all of our refreshment stands and she, wow. my mother-in-law is like the best. She is the best. You know, my daughter does the, the you know, takes the, 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 the stuff at the door. And, you know, my husband has been security and everybody's doing stuff. So we are, we, we pretty much pull it together, but we could all, all hands on deck. I'd love to have interns who would be interested in sports management come in and participate so that they could learn, okay. you know, that sports is not just about basketball. You know, sports is about marketing. It's about, um, you know, it, it could be just Brandy. about all different kinds of things. So I would like, to have you know people from the local colleges come in you know who are interested in sports management and join in with us um, and and learn about what it means to run a team or run a program I think that would be a great support to us is to be able to get oh yeah because it, okay. it, that's very important because you know these students need those hours in order to graduate Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, so that would be it. And also we always could use really good, you know, re recommendations for people that want to play through, through Mount Vernon. We're, we're always looking for some stronger from strong players. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So are you going to have um, like closer? Well, sometime like next year or anything, are you going to have, um, do you have, are you having a, a team tryout or do you already have your team? Um, no, we're going. We're going to have a, a, a tryout and open gym sessions again, probably in uh, in probably around April. We have to wait until the Boys and Girls Club has availability. Um, okay. Mm hmm. <laughs> and also have connections um, with young people that will want to come play. So I'm, that's what I'm going to be looking for for uh, 2021. Uh, you know, really, we may, you know, there's some players that will probably be Okay, okay. Well, you know what? We we not going we are not going to hold you. I understand, you know, it's your birthday, anniversary celebration still, but we just got one more thing. One more thing for you to do. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hold on, we about to get you back. Can you hear me? Not yet. Hold on, y'all. We're going to get one more word out of her. Just one more. Can you hear me? Okay. Keep... I can hear I'll you. Hold... Okay. All right. We ain't going to hold you, but before we go, I... uh -huh. can you please close us out with one more positive word? Just one more. One more positive word? <laughs> yes. Give us another positive word. Well, well, just to be, you know, well, well, just to be honest with you, for me, um, you know, I believe that, you know, the WABA is um, broken ground, but one of the most exciting parts for me during these years has been the breast cancer awareness. Um, you know, during the breast cancer awareness games, um, we have
be able Nope, I can't see this. I know she's still driving around. So she can get a signal, though. Hold on. That's what this interview is all about. Yeah, I can hear you, but I can't say something again. So you sound like a robot now. <laughs> this is an interview right here for the books. It really is. Oh, yeah, we're trying to get your auntie back on here. Right now, um, where she's at is a power outage. So she's trying to get a signal for her Wi-Fi. We're going to see if she can get right back on here. But overall, you all still, this was a great interview. We got to know who she was and what she stands for. Um, today, she was another powerhouse a woman breaking barriers in the sports industry, a woman of God, a woman of integrity. And that's exactly what's needed to represent, especially our culture with the new unrest in this world, the new civil rights movement, police brutality. Okay. All right, here she is. We're going to get her back on one more time. Again, here go the word. The word of the day, persistence.
<laughs> Some signal. All right, here we go. There you go. <laughs> And you know what? And you you came back on at the right time because again, we need a power another powerful positive word from you to close this interview out. To close us out, <laughs> the floor is yours. The ball is in your court. Wow. Well, the most positive thing I can say is I made it all the way over to my daughter's house to sit to see my brand new grandbaby. Life continues in the midst of everything that's been going on. Um, you know, I've seen babies be born. I've seen weddings still go on. I've seen life still move forward. And so I'm excited because, you know, in the midst of everything, I have, I'll show you what I have to make me, one of the things that makes me happy. Okay. And let me show you one Thanks, of the things that makes me happy. Oh, is that. that is my, I am a, a grandma. And that is my, that is my new grandbaby. And in the midst of me trying to get on, I figured I would just, just uh, try to make it to their house in enough time. <laughs> so oh, you made it. So in the midst you know, of everything. You just let that, our viewers know that you are persistent. So I said that is the word of the day, persistence. Persistency and, and faith. And, you know, I believe in all of those things. So I'm grateful for the opportunity. I am so sorry that everything was so choppy. It seemed like it wasn't going to happen. You know like last year's, last week, something happened and then this. But, you know what? Okay. It's, you know? It's, 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 it's IG as a whole. I, I watch other interviews and everybody freeze and come back on. So it's okay. Yeah. It's not just us. <laughs> Well, I, I wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to, to share the word. And I'm looking, like I said, I, I believe that the, the Mount Vernon Shamrocks will continue, as well as the, the, the other WABA teams. I've enjoyed every time, every time I've gone to a team to play. And I hope that when other teams come to play against the Mount Vernon Shamrocks, that they, they are treated well, um, even though it's always hot in the gym, that they're treated well. And as I closed out before, when I was crying, I was just talking about Rachel Jones and just very grateful that I've had an opportunity to have her in my life and the fact that she was such a great representation of the WABA as an official and as a friend. Yeah. So, you know, so I'm grateful to work with the team that I have, uh, the coaching, the leadership team uh, with Marsha, Mia, Crystal, and Deirdre. And, you know, anybody who wants to join in and be a part with us, we're very open to it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. Well, you know what? Again, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy your birthday. Enjoy your grandbaby. Enjoy your husband. Enjoy your life. And thank you. you. Know, and, and soon, uh, later on, if, if not the latter part of this year, definitely next year. We, we're going to have you back on, okay? <laughs> thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a blessed Friday, a blessed weekend, and just smile. <laughs> thank just you. Smile. God bless you. God bless All right. You. All right. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right, guys. There you have it. Again, um, we had a persistent interview today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for those who will tune in. And again, this is another IG Live conversation with the WABA in partnership with me. She knows her sports. Um, and for more information on the WABA's professional league, uh, please visit womensaba.com or follow them here on IG at womensaba. And also to support She Knows Her Sports, as one of their media partners, please follow us here on Instagram at She Knows Her Sports. Uh, we will be interviewing more coaches, more players, and more owners within the WABA League. So you all can get to know everyone and um, um, possibly, you know, become a supporter, become a partner, become a player, become a coach, become an owner, because there is opportunities. So again, womensaba.com. And enjoy your Friday. Thank you again for your support. And I'll see you guys again next week.